We need to get the schedule for the Boys Girls Club. Oh, we're on. <laughs> So soon. Hello there. I'm talking to some very good friends of mine. Um, this is Get Curious with Safety Girl. And tonight is No Apologies by Pride. And I got this uh, topic, this statement from the Queer Summit at Eastern Michigan University uh, just this year, 1998. And I was so inspired by the panel, No Apologies by Pride, that I wanted to have a few people who were on the panel um, come on the show and talk to me about bisexuality. What is bisexuality? Um, do you choose to be bi? Or are you just waiting, you know, to, or thinking about if you're going to go straight or go gay? Or can you be content in your own bisexuality? I want to know some answers to these questions. I know they're personal. Everyone has their own answers, their own definitions. Bear with me and my guests, Ann Arbor Nipsalani. And if anything, hopefully you'll just start thinking about um, your own views on bisexuality. And hopefully you'll be a little more comfortable with it. Um, I have with me Chris Pride, who is a graduate of Eastern Michigan University. And uh, now you're, what are you doing now? I am a graduate assistant in the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgendered Resource Center on campus. How appropriate. And I'm in graduate school working on my master's in social work. Very good. And we also have Heather McAllister, um, who I'm sure if you're a regular viewer, you've seen her many <laughs> times, uh, looking as beautiful as ever. Hello, yeah. honey. Thanks. Thanks for having me again. Oh, thank you. And congratulations. I heard through the grapevine that you just recently graduated. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, yeah. Yay! <laughs> And what in? In anthropology. Okay, which and is? We've, um, I've been doing some work on sexuality studies actually and gender and things like that, so. Oh yeah, you definitely have, have an affinity for <laughs> sexuality. I've asked, you've helped me out a lot in my research for shows and personal good, reasons. Good. So it's always nice to have a good friend on the show. Thank you. Um, first off, you know, we have, there's such a strong community of gay and lesbians, and of course there's a strong community for heterosexuals, but I don't feel like there's really that much of a community for bisexuals. And then again, I don't even know if there's a definition of what is a bisexual. It seems so blurred. Um, and I was wondering if both of you could talk to my audience and I about, you know, what you think of being bisexual is. Um, Chris? To me, it's just being capable of being attracted to both sexes. It's as simple as that. But there are a lot of misconceptions that people have about bisexuality. There's a lot of assumptions that people have, like that um, I am non-monogamous or polyamorous, but not all bisexuals are. And that's one of the big ones, that people automatically assume that you will sleep with anybody oh, if you're, you're bi. Oh, you're attracted to everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. yep. Um, I, it's hard to define bisexuality, and I, I generally don't because I can't come up with something, a, a good working definition a for it. But I like, I like what Chris says, the way that Chris says it. And what Chris and I talked about a little bit before the show was that there's a continuum of bisexuality, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that I wanted into the continuum, this is, you know, speaking purely for myself, um, what I've observed is that there, I'm going to talk about women. As, as a woman myself, and men, I guess, too, there's people who are more identified heterosexually. Their main connections are with people of the so-called opposite sex, mm -hmm. but and there are people who are more homosexually oriented or lesbian gay oriented, and their main connections are, or most of their connections are people with the same sex. And then there, in between those two, there's a whole spectrum of, peop of, this, of people and, and places and, that you can be. And I've noticed mm -hmm. that as I get older and my life changes, my sexuality is fluid, and I hope it continues to be so, and that I continue to learn more about sexuality. You're fully and myself. sexual. <laughs> right. And it's, you know, when I was younger, I was more, inter I mean, I dated men more often. And now, as I get older, I'm married to a man, but I date women more often. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to, I went to Silent Legacy a couple of years ago. And there was a it was a drag show, mm -hmm. and the uh, MC, um, the queen of the evening, uh, she came up to my friend and pulled her up on the stage, and asked her, "Are you um, you know so what are you? Are you lesbian or are you confused?" Mm. Uh, and and sh and 
she was making such a joke about it. I just wanted to jump up there and wring her neck. <laughs> I was so glad she didn't ask me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, but yeah. that's that's such a, such a myth mm -hmm. that you're confused and you're eventually going to either be uh, be completely lesbian or heterosexual. Mm -hmm. You're on your way to one or the other. What's your take on that? Are you confused? I would Do love to talk about that. Please. Uh, when I was, I came out as bisexual when I was 16, and I'm 30 now. And when I was about 17 or 18, I was 18, I met a woman and who became a friend, and she said, I bet you in 10 years you'll either be lesbian or straight. Well, it's been over 10 years, and we're still in contact. I'm like, guess what? I'm still bisexual. Ha, ha, ha. That's you. Um, and that was, so that was, it was great for me to be able to say that, and I knew that's where I was coming from, you know. And I don't feel confused at all, but as someone who is, has so many connections in the lesbian community, um, I find it particularly difficult because there's an assumption that I will leave you for a man or that I'm a traitor to lesbians and all mm. this kind of, I will take lesbian energy. Yes. I've given up and so have many bisexual women and men have given so much energy and time and commitment to the lesbian gay community and only now are we starting to be acknowledged for that. Mm -hmm. We've always been here mm -hmm. but we haven't always been visible and now we're finally demanding that we be acknowledged for our part in the community. Mm -hmm. I've had totally the same experience. In fact, I have gone through periods of shame about being bisexual. Oh, you're feeling um, really bad about it. Yeah, because I have very few straight friends. Guilty. Most of my friends are lesbians and mm -hmm. I've I've been in places where I've hidden my wedding ring because I didn't want the lesbians to see that I was married and it's it's hard. Well, you know, I have um I don't know if have you guys seen the movie Chasing Amy? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it no. Oh god, okay, Chris, you saw it. I, I really enjoyed it personally. I thought it covered a lot of uh, real topics mm -hmm. uh, that most mainstream I don't know, media uh, just does not even want to try to tackle. Mm -hmm. And there's one, one little clip, a short clip, we're going to air it right now. And let's get into Chasing Amy and we'll be right back because that speaks um, about what you're saying, mm -hmm. about just being afraid mm -hmm. to tell your friends so let's show that clip, Chasing Amy, and we'll be right back. From what I understand, when you sign with a publisher, someone else does all this work for you, and you just sit back and collect I miss these late-night cram sessions with my nearest and dearest. Never. I don't know what she's bitching about. All she's done since we got here is pound Merlot. Yeah, you're a real help. But what I'd like to know is why we're even here at all when we haven't seen Prince's funny book in a month. Yeah, Alyssa, who are you shacking up with? Shacking up with, please. I'm so in love. <laughs> I know, I know, I feel like such a goon, but I can't help it. We just, we have such a great time together. Who is it? Someone you guys don't know. That chick you left the restaurant with that night. They're not from around here. Don't even tell me you met her down the shore. Ew, a bridge and tunnel Jersey dyke with huge hair and acid wash <laughs> For your information, they don't have big hair or wear acid wash. They're from my hometown. Why are you playing the pronoun game? What? What are you talking about? I'm not even. You are. I met someone. We have a great time. They're from my hometown. Doesn't this tube of wonderful have a name? Holden. Well, here's to the both of you. Another one bites the dust. I've seen that look. You've seen the look? <laughs> so have I. Looks. Can you guys identify with this at all out there? I'm sure a lot of people yeah. can identify with this. These are supposed to be her friends, and yet mm -hmm. she, I mean, she's just struggling to, to tell them, you know, besides being in love, this mm -hmm. is the person I'm in love with. Mm -hmm. And here's, here comes the reaction. 
which is, you know, another one bites the dust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, betray, I feel betrayed, and, you know, mm -hmm. going off your own community, your own tribe almost, just, you know, leaving us mm -hmm. behind, I guess, is a lot of the uh, feeling around this in particular, but I'm sure um, even more strongly, it, it, there's a lot of lesbians who feel like you're hurting the cause. Right. Well, I think there are, um, there are women who do come into the community who do aren't out as bisexual and they ha lead a generally heterosexual life with a husband and they will come into the community and date women but not acknowledge that and that's very painful for lesbian women and I want to say that that does happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but here I am I'm on television and I've been out as bi for what is it 14 years now and I still get that same thing so what happens is that you're judging all everyone by a standard and that's prejudice by the actions by your fear by one's fear and their and your assumptions of what someone might have done to you once so that you think it's going to happen or the way some people behave you're judging an entire group of people and that's prejudice and that's ridiculous it's not fair to I mean I think that our work has to be acknowledged people who have been out you know, in the mm -hmm. community. And I find it rather ironic. I mean, usually if somebody is gay coming out to their straight friends, you, sh you can expect that kind of reaction. Mm -hmm. But you would think that the gay community or the queer community would be more accepting. Because they've gone through something like mm -hmm. that. They've done their own coming out process. Or maybe they haven't. You know, and that's, that's what gets right. me. It's like you can't even be out to your people, to your family as a lesbian, but here I am coming out to my family, my friends, and you as bisexual. Mm -hmm. Why can't you be more supportive? It's very, it's frustrating. Well, a lot of, there are, you know, from what I hear, I, I saw a 2020 program, and um, there really, there really isn't a bisexual communi um, community. And uh, even 2020 didn't go to a bisexual uh, community or people when they were talking about bisexuality they went mm -hmm. to a lesbian community um, what's what's up with that where you know where can bisexuals mm -hmm. go and feel comfortable and not be fearful of just being attracted to both sexes there is a bisexual community and in 1987 I marched there was about 16 of us 16 <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> maybe 20 this is <laughs> 1987 at the uh, march in Washington the um, lesbian gay march in Washington it was called I think, the lesbian the gay yes um, there were very few of us at the time and at that point that was really in my understanding of when the real movement was born is that people came out of that experience and started doing national networking around bisexual issues there's a publication called anything that moves and and that's a magazine sort of making a play on the on the phrase you'll do Any, anything that moves you know? yeah um, and reclaiming that and there are support groups all over the country there are support groups to meet here in, in the Ann Arbor area there is quite a body of literature out um, U of M just had Lani Kaumanu speak who is a very well-known nationally known bisexual activist so there is a community 2020 might not have done their research and, <laughs> you know looked for it hard well I think the resources are there I don't necessarily feel connected to a bisexual community though. yeah I think right. that's mm -hmm. you that's know true. But and there, there was a big international bisexuality conference that just happened in Boston at the beginning of the month at Harvard and mm -hmm. I really would have liked to have gone to that. Mm -hmm. um, I was at Across the Fruited Plains which was the uh, LGBT Midwest College Conference in February in Chicago and I went to a bisexuality workshop there and the room was full. There were I would say probably 50 people in there and everybody wanted to talk because it was the first time that most of us had actually been in the same room with all bisexual people and yeah, it was really intense. That has to be empowering as It heck. was, it <laughs> was. Um, do you think that you choose to be bi? You know, I, really don't, I don't think it matters whether or not you choose it or you're born that way. Um, I'm happy with it, I am totally comfortable with it um, for the most part. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I chose it or, or what. It doesn't really matter. I don't like to get into the argument because it's the same one about being gay. Do you choose it? And mm -hmm. my feeling is there's something wrong with me. But I don't have a disease, so it's not like it's not like I'm sinning. Mm -hmm. So oh, I can't help myself. I did, I was born right. this way. Well, well, you know what? If I had a choice, I would still choose this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a more healthy way of looking at it. Very good point. Um, even though you know you hear not from I, I don't want to place the label. I hate to place the labels. Period. But. Um, I have heard from certain people in the lesbian community um, and in the gay community that you do choose to be bi. Well, my they, they, some mm -hmm. people buy into that. <laughs> no well, content. How, how, would they, how would they feel though if 
um, a, a right wing fanatic come up to them and say, "Well, you choose to be a lesbian." It's they would probably argue that. Right, exactly. So again, it's it's a false argument, and it's yeah, a very divisive argument to make. Mm -hmm. um, I liked what Robin Oach, Oaks Oaks said. Um, she said that if God meant for there to be bisexuals, then there'd be two sexes. <laughs> I love her. She's the one that led that bisexuality workshop. Oh, actually. is she now? Okay. Yeah, she it, is really wonderful. She's a leading bisexual mm -hmm. um, advocate then. She's a social worker. She uh, teaches classes on bisexuality. She goes all over the country doing lectures. And Does she have some books out too? <sighs> I, she, she has an essay in a, in a okay. book in by any other name. Oh, okay. She's she's in that. So so people can look up on the internet too for mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, what about people who fear bisexuality? Um, they they will accept gay and lesbian. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm talking about heterosexual people. Uh, as an example, I know somebody who came out as bi to her friends and one of the first reactions uh, she got was well don't come on to me uh, just just putting up that wall right mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. any suggestions her heterosexual mm. friend said that yes um <laughs> well I, I feel the heat <laughs> coming <laughs> off guys I have, a, I have a pen I wish I were wearing it it says I'm bisexual and I'm not attracted to you yes because <laughs> mm -hmm. oh that's such a it's such a it's myth a kind of misperception. Well. Flatter yeah. yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, are, you. you know, uh, not all lesbians are attracted to all women, and gay men are attracted to all men, and it's the same for straight people. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I'm just as selective as, or even more, not more so, than the next person mm -hmm. in who I date. It's just that I don't limit myself based on someone's plumbing, as it were. And also, something to think about is that as transgender people become more visible, um, that's something that our community has to deal with more because um, women who thought of themselves as lesbians identify as lesbian are dating women, some of them are becoming men, or vice versa. I mean, it's happening all over the board. Gender is fluid, mm -hmm. so then you can't even use labels like right. lesbian, gay, heterosexual, bisexual. Because if once gender doesn't, once you don't have a, you know, I know exactly what your gender is, when you don't know that, then you can't put that label.